Adam fell that man might be, and men are that they might have joy. These three events, the creation, the fall, and the atonement, are three preeminent pillars of God's plan, and they are doctrinally interrelated. The creation of the earth was a preparatory part of our Father's plan. Then the gods went down to organize man in their own image, male and female, to form they them. And the gods said, We will bless them. And bless us they did, with a plan that would give us physical bodies of our very own. Adam and Eve were the first people to live upon the earth. They were different from the plant and animal life that had been created previously. Adam and Eve were children of God. Their bodies of flesh and bone were made in the express image of God's. In that state of innocence, they were not yet mortal. They could have had no children, were not subject to death, and could have lived in Eden's garden forever. Thus, we might speak of the creation in terms of a paradisiacal creation. If that state had persisted, you and I would still be stranded among heavenly hosts as unborn sons and daughters of God. The great plan of happiness would have been frustrated. That leads us to the fall of Adam. To bring the plan of happiness to fruition, God issued to Adam and Eve the first commandment ever given to mankind. It was a commandment to beget children. A law was explained to them. Should they eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, their bodies would change. Mortality and eventual death would come upon them. But partaking of that fruit was prerequisite to their parenthood. While I do not fully understand all the biochemistry involved, I do know that their physical bodies did change. Blood began to circulate in their bodies. Adam and Eve thereby became mortal. Happily for us, they could also beget children and fulfill the purposes for which the world was created. Happily for them, the Lord said unto Adam and Eve, Behold, I have forgiven thee thy transgression in the Garden of Eden. We and all mankind are forever blessed because of Eve's great courage and wisdom. By partaking of the fruit first, she did what had to be done. Adam was wise enough to do likewise. Accordingly, we could speak of the fall of Adam in terms of a mortal creation, because Adam fell that man might be. Other blessings came to us through the fall. It activated two closely coupled additional gifts from God, nearly as precious as life itself, agency and accountability. We became free to choose liberty and eternal life or to choose captivity and death. Freedom of choice cannot be exercised without accountability for choices made. Now we come to the third pillar of God's plan, the Atonement. Just as Adam and Eve were not to live forever in the Garden of Eden, so our final destination was not to be planet Earth. We were to return to our heavenly home. Given that reality, still another change was necessary. An infinite atonement was required to redeem Adam, Eve, and all of their posterity. That atonement must enable our physical bodies to be resurrected and changed to a bloodless form no longer liable to disease, deterioration, or death. According to eternal law, that atonement required a personal sacrifice by an immortal being not subject to death. Yet he must die and take up his own body again. The Savior was the only one who could accomplish this. From his mother he inherited power to die. From his father he obtained power over death. The Redeemer so explained, I lay down my life that I might take it again. No man taketh it from me, but I lay it down of myself. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it again. The Lord declared that this is my work and my glory to bring to pass the immortality and eternal life of man. He who had created the earth came into mortality to fulfill the will of his Father and all prophecies of the Atonement. And as Atonement redeems every soul from penalties of personal transgression on the condition of repentance. Thus, we might speak of the Atonement in terms of the 
immortal creation. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. At some point in life, every one of us will face the same question. We will see someone we love lowered into the grave and wonder if we will ever see them again. Or we will know someone, perhaps even ourselves, who has cut himself off from God's presence and wonder if there is any way back. God set in place a plan that answers both of those questions with a resounding yes. We can overcome death. We can return to be with Him. And more importantly, we can return and become like Him. All of this was made possible through the sacrifice of the only begotten Son,